session is sponsored by AstraZeneca and it gives me great pleasure to introduce our patron for the conference, Dr. Hemant Malhotra, Senior Medical Oncologist from Jaipur. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Kashish, and many thanks to the organizers, particularly Dr. Mahajan for this opportunity. And uh, I'll talk to you uh, in the next 15 or 20 minutes about uh, the use of the third generation EGFR inhibitor, osimertinib, and show you some uh, studies uh, with, uh, with the real world evidence in this disease. So we are pretty much aware, I think everybody is aware, that in patients with EGFR mutation, uh, uh, if you give an EGFR inhibitor, then that is significantly better than chemotherapy. I think everybody is convinced about that, whether you give the first generation EGFR inhibitor or the second generation or the third generation, that is the first line treatment. We have the FLORA study, and I think again most of you are aware about the FLORA study of osimertinib, which is an irreversible third generation EGFR TKI, uh, which produces a significant uh, median progression free advantage 18 point 19 months versus 10 months very impressive hazard ratio of 0.46 a p value of less than 0 0.001 uh, in the phase 3 randomized study there was overall survival benefit also 38.6 months versus 31.8 months hazard ratio of 0.8 uh, in the last uh, uh, presented data and this is the FLORA study, which was first presented in the ESMO and then published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Very briefly, the study designed for you. Uh, inclusion was patients with locally advanced or metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, less than more than 18 years of age, PS0 or 1, either exon 19 or exon 21 deletion, and uh, treatment naive. Uh, and uh, patients who had stable CNS disease could be uh, included. They were randomized one-to-one uh, -to, -one to receive osimertinib, the third generation EGFR inhibitor, versus the first, any one of the two first generation EGFR inhibitors, gefitinib or erlotinib standard doses. Uh, stratification was done by whether the patient has exon 19 mutation or exon 21 mutation, whether they were Asians versus non-Asians. The resis assessment of disease was done every six weeks and the uh, um, uh, overall survival was the key secondary endpoint. Uh, this is the uh, patient characteristics for you. Uh, more than 270 <laughs> patients in both the arms and pretty much matched uh, uh, about two thirds of the patients being Asian. Uh, about uh, 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 two-thirds of the patients being uh, never smokers, about 20-odd percent having CNS metastasis uh, at presentation, uh, and almost all of them had adenocarcinoma histology. Two-thirds had exon 19 mutation versus one-third with exon 21 mutation. And here are the progression-free survival curves for you. Uh, very impressive difference, uh, the yellow arms being the curves with uh, uh, osimertinib versus the blue curves uh, which were with the first generation TKIs. Subgroup analysis, so across the board, uh, whatever the subgroup you look at, there was significant benefit with osimertinib. Overall survival, uh, uh, again, uh, 38.6 in the osimertinib arm versus 31.8 in the in the first generation TKI arm uh, has a ratio of 0.799 p value of 0.42. So the conclusions of the uh, FLORA study was that there was a significant statistical improvement uh, in overall survival with osimertinib. Uh, median survival was extended by almost seven months. Uh, and this is the first uh, TKI uh, uh, which showed a statistically significant improvement in overall survival. Uh, and after three years, about 30% of the patients in the osimertinib arm versus 9% of patients in the EGFR first generation arm were uh, alive. 
and uh, the toxicity was quite acceptable even after prolonged exposure. And uh, after this flora study, osimertinib was accepted world over as first line treatment for patients of non-small cell lung cancer with EGFR mutation. And here are the NCCN guidelines for you. Uh, even though all the other first and second generation TKIs are also recommended, but the preferred uh, TKI is osimertinib as per the NCCN guidelines. Now this was the study, this was the flora study, and we know that uh, uh, inclusion criteria in the study are quite different from the real world situation and uh, AstraZeneca got down to gather some uh, real world evidence of the use of the third generation TKI and this was uh, presented and published at various foras uh, by the flora study, the OSI fact study and the Micon OS study and I'll just very quickly review these studies for you. This is the flora study, first line osimertinib in patients with AGFR mutant advanced non-small cell lung cancer. Uh, and we know that only 5% of patients uh, out of the whole uh, population are included in trials and real world data is very important to, uh, you know, convince uh, some of us that, okay, in your day-to-day -day practice also, the data from the randomized trials, the pivotal trials holds true. Here are the key features of the of the flower study. Uh, more than 120 patients uh, uh, evaluated, median age uh, 68 years. Again, uh, about uh, uh, two thirds were females. Uh, uh, two thirds were non-smokers. Majority, almost 95 percent, were adenocarcinomas. Uh, about one third had brain metastasis at presentation. Uh, majority of them were stage 4 disease uh, and about uh, half of them had bone metastasis at presentation. And uh, these were the main inclusion criteria, which are the standard inclusion criteria for osimertinib. I won't, you know, kind of uh, spend time on this. Uh, the study endpoints, uh, this was a relatively new endpoint which was used uh, uh, median time to uh, discontinuation which uh, a lot of people feel that is an adequate endpoint for uh, real world studies because many times if the patient is doing well and even if there is a, a, a progression on the imaging uh, we tend to continue and repeat the imaging after uh, three or six months and then if there is progression again uh, and the patient starts to have clinical symptoms that is the time when you stop the drug. So this uh, primary endpoint was used in this study, uh, the median time to discontinuation. Uh, and the secondary endpoints were our standard median overall survival and PFS and uh, response rates. Uh, one interesting part of this study was that patients with poor PS, meaning the PS2 and more, were also included in this analysis and were about 15% were there in this uh, analysis. Patients with some comorbidities were also included and patients with uh, rare mutations were also studied and some patients with brain metastasis were also included. Uh, and all these patients, this cohort of patients was excluded in the FLORA trial. So we do get some additional information regarding the real world patients uh, with the outcomes of this study. <coughs> uh, and in this uh, analysis, uh, uh, the authors did find that there was no difference in PFS, time to discontinuation, and OS in patients who were elderly, in patients who had comorbidity, and in patients who had the less frequent EGFR mutations, which constituted about 10% of patients. So this is again reassuring in the practice setting that the real world patients can also receive the agent and show benefit. Here are the primary assessment of effectiveness uh, Kaplan-Meier curves for you. This is the overall time to discontinuation uh, uh, of about 25 months and uh, uh, it was also seen 
that patients who had no symptoms at diagnosis or minimal symptoms of diagnosis, they did much better. And patients who had less than three sites of metastasis, uh, this uh, curve on your right side, they did better as compared to patients who had equal to or more than three sites of disease. So with regards to the effectiveness of the treatment, patients with poor PS, comorbidities, rare mutations, active brain metastasis were included in the analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, it was found that uh, uh, treatment to discontinuation uh, was a valuable endpoint in uh, this real world study. And the treatment to discontinuation was longer, 25.3 months. Uh, uh, as compared to the post-progression analysis of the flora, which was 20.8 months. So uh, it was also observed in this study that three cohorts of patients, uh, patients uh, uh, who had uh, uh, more number of sites of metastasis at diagnosis, patients who had brain metastasis at diagnosis, and patients who had who were more symptomatic at, at diagnosis, they did less well as compared to the other cohort of patients. Uh, the the uh, uh, partial response rates in this study was 73%, stable disease in 23%, so almost, you know, more than 90% of patients had clinical benefit. And I've already shown you these curves. Uh, uh, the longest PFS was noticed in the absence uh, and you can see the you know prolonged PS, uh, uh, which was observed in these studies, particularly who did not have the poor prognostic factors, which I've already discussed with you. Uh, with regards to safety data, the main concerns were what we are already aware of. The first was interstitial lung disease and pneumonitis. And the second was diarrhea, stomatitis, rash, dry skin, and nail changes, which we are all aware happen with the use of EGFR inhibitors. <coughs> uh, the uh, about almost 90% experienced some AEs. Uh, this was grade three to four and about one third. Uh, venous thromboembolism, which has been described now with osimertinib, uh, there was an incidence of about 8%. Uh, and pulmonary embolism of about 2%. So uh, you do need to be aware of at least two serious side effects with osimertinib. One is uh, interstitial lung disease and pneumonitis, and the second is deep vein thrombosis. So this is the second uh, real world study which I'd like to show you, the OC1 FACT study, again, uh, this was a real-world study with, uh, uh, the, with slightly different inclusion criteria as, as compared to uh, our standard clinical trial uh, or the flora. And uh, these were the baseline patient characteristics. Uh, uh, in this particular study, they also looked at uh, a PDL1 expression and the response to e EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. And uh, uh, these were the study endpoints. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival. And the secondary endpoints was overall survival, time to treatment failure, uh, and uh, you know the usual other secondary endpoints. So PFS uh, events occurred in 182 out of the 538 patients. Uh, median progression-free survival was 20 months plus. And here are the kaplan my curves for you. Median PFS of 20.5 months. Uh, 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 other parameters which were significantly related to the PFS, the first was male gender. The second was the present of presence of malignant pleural effusions, presence of liver metastasis, and presence of stage four unresectable disease. Uh, if you look at the PDL1 expression for the patients who <coughs> had very low PDL1 expression, they did significantly better than the patients who had PDL1 expression of more than 50%. This was only 11.1 month. 
uh, and this I've already highlighted to you, patient male gender, patients with uh, pleural effusion, patients with brain metastasis, uh, patients with stage 4 disease, and patients with a high PDL one expression, they did less well as compared to the other cohort of patients. The reasons for treatment discontinuation, about half of the patients were discontinued because of uh, disease progression and a quarter of patients were discontinued because of interstitial lung disease and pneumonitis. So that again is an important toxicity which we need to be aware of. <coughs> so the conclusion of this study was that the overall response rate, uh, almost three-fourths of the patients showed a response, disease control rate of 90% plus. Uh, PFS uh, better with osmotib than with conventional EGFR inhibitors. Uh, time to treatment failure of 19.1 month, which is higher than uh, the first or the second generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Pneumonitis is a, is a uh, toxicity of concern. Uh, and uh, uh, this study also reiterated the fact that even in real world practice, uh, osmotinib can be used with acceptable toxicity and significant benefit. And this was the last real world study uh, which I will present to you. Uh, again, uh, uh, they used the real world time to uh, uh, treatment stoppage and death uh, as their uh, uh, primary endpoint. Uh, similar study design, uh, similar inclusion criteria. Uh, this is the patient demographics, again, uh, quite similar to what we see in day-to-day -day practice. <coughs> uh, uh, most of the patients, half of them had exon 19 mutation, uh, about one-third has exon 21 mutation. Uh, and uh, 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 median time to uh, treatment stoppage or death was about 18 months. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the patients uh, had, this is the uh, subgroup analysis for you. And again, uh, repeating, uh, uh, showing again what the earlier two real world studies showed us. So the take home message for uh, from these studies is that we now have, in addition to a phase three pivotal clinical trial, we have real world insights into the first line use of osimetinib. Uh, we definitely see an advantage uh, over the first and the second generation TKIs. Uh, and uh, uh, in this particular study, the overall uh, 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 survival uh, will be analyzed uh, in 2023. Uh, uh, but as of now, we see that the PFS is significantly increased. So all of you are pretty much aware, uh, I think the AstraZeneca people have hammered into your head uh, how to use osimetinib. Uh, just remember, it's an expensive agent. And uh, you have to, if you use it, remember uh, and focus on interstitial lung disease and deep vein thrombosis amongst the other minor toxicities. With that, I'd like to uh, thank you again very much for this patient hearing. Thank you.